To start a game of Evolution New World, shuffle the area deck, deal six cards face down in a stack, and then deal a card for each player face up, like so. There are two players in this game, so there will be two face up area cards. The rest of the area cards will not be used and can be returned to the box without being revealed. Next, shuffle the evolution cards. Deal six cards to each player and place the rest on the table as a draw deck. Lastly, you'll want to make sure that the wooden tokens are placed near the area cards so they can be reached. And to finish up setting up, the youngest player is given the starting player token. Each game of evolution lasts for six rounds, and each of these rounds has four phases. This might seem a little intimidating, but I'll go through the basics just to keep things simple. And as with most games, things will make sense very quickly after you play a round. The first phase of the round is called the development phase, and this is the part where players can take turns building creatures. On your turn, you may play one card from your hand to either create a new creature or to add a trait to one of the creatures you already have. To start a creature, simply take a card from your hand and lay it face down on the table. This card now represents your creature. And once your turn comes around again, you may give it new traits by laying a card underneath the creature card. Notice that each card has two traits for you to choose from. The trait that you leave revealed is the trait your creature inherits. Now, there are many different traits for creatures in this game, and again, they may seem overwhelming. That's why the game comes with these references to help you understand all the different effects they have. I won't go into all of them here as this is just an introduction to the game, but if you would like a video that goes over each one individually, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll do that. I will mention that there are cards you can play to link two of your creatures via symbiosis, as well as cards that you can play on other players' creatures. Once you have run out of cards to play or just choose to be done playing cards this round, you may pass. This means you cannot play any more cards from your hand. Once every player has passed, it's time for phase two, the area phase. To begin the area phase, flip over the top card from the area card stack and place it on the right of the face up area cards. Next, look at the symbols at the bottom of the area cards and place tokens that match on them. These will be resources available to the creatures for the next phase in this round. There are some specialized area cards that I'll touch on before we get to that though. Swamp cards start with one food token. But if a creature dies at any time, the swamp gains a food token on the grayed out symbols. If you happen to have two swamps out, both gain a food token. Double area cards offer two pools of resources, one that any creature can access, and another that only animals with a specific trait can use. For instance, this card has both lakes and reed beds on it. Both areas have food tokens to offer, but to access the lake's resources, a creature must have the swimming trait. Alright, we've been talking a lot about tokens and resources, but haven't really explained what they do. That's all explained in this next phase, the feeding phase. The goal of this phase is to make sure your creatures all get enough to eat. How much a creature needs to eat in order to survive this round is determined by the traits that the creature has. A creature starts off only needing one food token per round, but some traits, like these, add to that number so your creature will need to consume more if they want to survive. On a player's turn, they may take a token from one of the areas and place it on one of their creatures. A food token, as you might guess, fulfills a creature's food needs, whereas a leaf, or shelter token, makes a creature immune to any attacks from predators. Speaking of which, if your creature has the carnivorous trait, they may choose, instead of taking food from the areas, to attack another creature to gain two special food tokens. These act the same as normal food tokens, but they come from special sources. A predator can only do this once per round, and there are many traits that target animals may have to deter predators and possibly even cause the predator to die. So this might not be the best option, but if a predator is left hungry without any food tokens available, they are forced to attack another creature. In this case, the player sees that all the food is taken, and they are going to have to eat another creature. Their opponent has a creature that has taken shelter, so that creature is off the menu. They also have a creature that has camouflage, so the predator cannot target them either. The only other creature their opponent has is the one with the poisonous trait, which would kill the predator if they tried to eat it. The player decides that they don't want to kill their predator off, so instead, they eat one of their own creatures. This may cost them points in the end of the game, but the predator lives for this round. If a predator succeeds in its attack, the target creature dies and is put into the discard pile along with all attached trait cards. Before we go into the next phase, let's talk about the last token we haven't touched on, 
the fat token. This token is used with the fat tissue trait, and it allows the creature to eat more food than they need and turn it into fat tokens, so that if in future rounds there is a food scarcity, the creature can use the fat tokens to live off of instead of food tokens. All right, lastly, there is the extinction phase, and it's about as grim as it sounds. Any of the creatures that didn't have enough food or fat tokens to satisfy their needed quota die meaning that the creature card and any connected trait cards are put into the discard pile. Similarly, if any predators attacked a poisonous creature last turn, they also die. After all the deaths are taken care of, return all food and shelter tokens to their supply piles. Fat tokens can stay where they are. Next, go to the area cards and discard the one that is furthest to the left. This will make room for the new area card for the next round. And finally, if you have traits that require you to tilt your card to show that you've already used them this round, you can straighten them out again for the next round. Before you start the next round, be sure to draw more evolution cards. Draw a card for each creature you have, plus two. Then, if you have more than six, discard down to six. If you don't have any creatures that survived this round, draw six cards instead. Then pass the starting player token to the left. After you have played six rounds, the game ends and the players add up their points. Three points per surviving animal, one point for every trait card connected to at least one animal, and if a trait card has a plus one or plus two symbol on it, then add that amount to your score. Highest score wins, obviously. And that's the game of Evolution New World. It's a game that I enjoy a lot, and there are other versions out there that I'm looking forward to trying out. So if this looks like fun, give it a shot. And until next time, this is Hogwash, over and out, catch you later.